What's up, future docs? I'm Cody. I'm a fourth year medical student. Welcome back to my channel. So if you tuned into my last vlog, I started talking about how I plan to pay down my debt. And I told you guys that I would share with you how I plan to, you know, make those car purchases and make those home purchases. So if you haven't seen my latest vlog, make sure you go and check that out. So I know finances can be sort of a touchy subject. I'm a firm believer in vocations, meaning going into something that you have a calling for, something that you're passionate about. And I don't think the earnings that you get from your career should be the end all be all to that situation. Because at the end of the day, the wealth that you wanna build is not gonna necessarily come from your earned income. It may give you the capital that you need to build your wealth, but your wealth is gonna come from your unearned income. So whether you make, you know, 20,000, 40,000, 400,000 or 4 million dollars, you should be going into a career field that you're passionate about because if you base your career solely on making money, it's not going to last. You know, you're going to burn out relatively quickly. For me, I chose to go into a career of medicine because it was a vocation for me. When I was thinking about the careers that I wanted to do in high school, I just kept coming back to medicine. Now, did money play a part? Sure, it played a small part in it. But I knew that I would be making money elsewhere, regardless of what career I wanted to go into. So I just followed my passion and went into medicine. All right, so now let's pick up where we left off at the last vlog. I'll just give you guys a quick recap. So I gave an example of someone that's $400,000 in, in debt. And so I said that if I gave myself a raise after residency, so about living off of $70,000 a year, and I make $220,000 after tax and all the other fees, you know, funding, everything, um, I'm left with about $150,000 to pay, you know, down my student loan debt. And that would take roughly about two and a half years. So now, let's say we're at two and a half years now, right? And I say, you know, you want to kind of live beneath your means. You always want to live beneath your means, but continue to live beneath your means for about four to five years so that you can get the house of your dreams and the car of your dreams. Now, let's just use this as an example, right? I'm not saying that I want this or you want this. Some people have different lifestyles and some people just want different things, you know? But let's say you want a million dollar home, right? And you want two nice, real, relatively nice cars. Sis, you want that range? Cool. Bro, bro, you want that AMG? Cool, we got you. So let's say that you want a million dollar home and you know, roughly the cars will cost about, I don't know, $100,000 for both of them, if you get it right. So let's just look at some numbers. So first let's start off with your home. Let's say you wanted a million dollar home and you needed a down payment of 20%. So 20% of $1 million would be $200,000 that you had to have upfront. Um, for the sake of, to keep this simple, I'm not gonna include any closing costs and any other things like that. I'm just gonna say what you need in order to purchase that home, if you had to put 20% down. So again, you're saving $150,000, right? $150,000. So if we were to divide that over the 200, it would take you 1.33 years, right? Cool, not bad. So now let's look at your cars, okay? So this is where it kind of gets a little bit fun and interesting. So if we wanted to buy, just for example, you know, wifey wanted that new range, um, and you wanted that C-Class AMG, you just get like the base model, brand new, right? So you're looking at about 60,000 for the range and about 50,000 for the AMG. Okay, cool. But let's just say you wanted to decrease that price just a little bit, right? And you opt in to get a car that's about two years old because as you know, cars tend to depreciate as soon as they get off the lot. So by year two, that car will have depreciated about 20 to 30 percent so now let's look at those numbers so now we decide to instead of getting a brand spanking new car we're going to opt out and get a two-year-old car just come off a lease it's about 12 to 15 thousand miles on both of them look at the difference that makes you would have been paying hundred and ten thousand dollars for the brand new cars and now you're paying eighty eight thousand dollars you're saving yourself $22,000, right? 
So for the sake of time, we're just gonna add both of these quantities up, right? So the 200,000 plus the 88,000 will leave us with a total of 288,000, right? And we'll just say 300 just to cover any additional cost that you have. So 300,000 divided by that 150 equals about two additional years. Not too bad. So you may be wondering, you know, why am I just coming out of pocket $88,000 for the cars when I can just, you know, get a lease or just do monthly payments on it? And again, I'm not trying to give you advice. These are things that I will be implementing myself, but I'm just sharing it with you guys. So me personally, I'm not fond of having all these monthly payments for these cars because, you know, for those cars, you'll probably end up paying, what, $1,600 a month for both of them, where you can just save the money, you know, live beneath your means, save the money, and just buy them cash. You don't have to worry about having any car payments. And the money that you would use for car payments, again, you can use it for things like investing, funding vacations, different things. I just want you to have, well, me, I want myself to have, because I don't want to get in trouble for giving you guys financial advice, but I just want myself to have as much monthly income that I can use towards other things, except for, you know, I don't want to be paying down debt for the rest of my life. Instead, let's say, you know, you want to have a new car or so every five years, like most people do. You can just save like a thousand dollars instead of spending sixteen hundred dollars. Save a thousand dollars a month. Put the other six hundred toward you know investments or whatever, and then with a thousand dollars a month in five years, you'll be able to do the same process again. Plus, if you wanted to trade those old cars in, you get an additional amount of money you know that you can use toward getting the new cars. So it's just some food for thought. But at the end of the day, it would take, you know, four and a half years to get the house of your dreams, you know, a million dollar home and two luxury cars to throw in your, you know, in your front yard or whatever. And like I said, you can play with these figures how you want to. Some people may just want like a two hundred, five hundred thousand dollar home. They may want more. These are just some just easy numbers that I wanted to use so they're easy to work with. But yeah, four and a half years. That's not too, you know, a lot of people in like high salary jobs and positions, um, they have this notion that they need to keep up with the Joneses because you know, oh, you're a lawyer, oh, you're a doctor, oh, you're a CEO, you should be living a certain type of way. And you know, that can be a downfall of many people. You know, you wanna be smart, you wanna live beneath your means, you know, and grow into your salary. You know, I'm, me personally, I'm not just gonna graduate residency just start spending my money in and incurring even more debt on top of the debt that I already have. So I plan to, you know, live beneath my means for about four and a half to five years and still, you know, have a nice salary, take care of my family, you know, do investments, you still save, put money toward your emergency fund, but just on a lower salary. And then once you have everything that you want, you know, you don't have any payments. You just have like a 15 year mortgage that you're paying and making extra payments on because you don't have student loan debt and you don't have car payments that you have to do. So you have a 15 year mortgage, end up paying your mortgage off in 10 years. Now you're debt free. So that's just some food for thought. I think on the next um, vlog, I'm gonna talk about the difference between you know doctor's loans and regular loans because there's a, a huge difference. You know, oftentimes the doctor's loans they have that they have that notion where you don't have to put any money down, but you also have some things to look out on the back end. So I think that'll be a good topic to cover. Um, I'm liking these financial series. I don't know if you guys liking it. Put it down in the comments below if you do. Um, yeah, so if you guys have any questions, any comments, any content that you want uploaded, make sure you drop it down below in the comment box. I'll be sure to get back to you. And Oh, and I almost forgot this week's book highlight is The Millionaire Real Estate Investor um, by Gary Keller. Pretty good book. I'm not going to lie. It's pretty lengthy. Um, but again, gems in this book, especially if you're thinking about going into real estate and uh, just becoming an investor, it gives you a lot of 
a lot of detailed um, information in this. So uh, I'll make sure I put the link in the description below. Um, get this book, it's on Amazon, really cheap. Um, and that's it. I'll see you guys on the next vlog.